Deathclaws are some of the most feared creatures in the Fallout series. They destroy trade caravans, take over quarries blocking off entire parts of the map, and strike fear into almost anyone that comes across them. These massive beasts are truly the apex predator of the wasteland, but when it comes to the recent Fallout games, they are surprisingly easy to take down. Over the past few years, I have seen countless posts about how Deathclaws are weaker now and in need of a buff, and this has really interested me a lot over the past week. I even ran a poll on the channel, and with almost 2,000 votes, it seems like most people are in favor of a buff. So in this video, I would like to take a look at why so many people feel like Deathclaws are weaker than they used to be. So first off, let's quickly go over the lore of Deathclaws. They were originally made before the Great War by the US military to replace troops in close quarters combat situations. Everything from their claws to their hide and even their stance was genetically altered to create the most deadly and resilient creature possible. The Deathclaw would later escape the laboratories during the Great War and then went on to populate the wasteland. In Fallout 1, 2, and even 3 in New Vegas, Deathclaws were not a fun thing to come across. They could easily destroy a loaded mid-level player, and even force higher level players to struggle. I still vividly remember my first Deathclaw encounter. It was in Fallout 3 northeast of Megaton back in 2009. A few Wastelanders were fighting a weak Deathclaw and I ran over to help. I watched the Deathclaw smack one of them, killing them in one hit and me and the other emptied our magazines into it, finally taking it down. From that one experience, watching a person get killed by one hit, I knew that Deathclaws were not something I'd like to fight again, especially if they were full health. Throughout the rest of my playthrough, I would fight them with extreme caution, always trying to use stealth to my advantage and only fighting them if I really had to. This fear of Deathclaws roaming the wasteland carried right over into Fallout New Vegas. Once I finished my quest in Good Springs and saw where the strip was on the map, I decided like most people to just cut across the mountains and head straight for it, only to find myself stuck in Quarry Junction with hardly any aid or ammo. And after noticing that there was no safe way to get past them, I just tried to reload a save and head back the safe route towards Prim. The Deathclaws in the Mojave only elevated my fear. There was now more than one type of Deathclaw. You would come across Young Deathclaws, Blind Deathclaws, Alpha Deathclaws, Claws and even Deathclaw Mothers. All of this variety added a whole new layer of challenge to these already super strong creatures, so by the time Fallout 4 came out, I was so stoked to see even more types of new Deathclaws and with the new graphics and gameplay enhancements, I couldn't imagine how scary facing one of them would be. So after meeting Preston and getting the power armor off the roof and heading down the road, I saw it the new Deathclaw emerging from the sewers. It looked larger than ever, its claws were huge, and its new design had me terrified. I knew that this was going to be a hard fight, especially because I was only around level 3 or 4 at the time. I thought I was way in over my head. But the fight was surprisingly easy. It hardly did any damage, and its attacks just felt different. Rather than just rushing you and hitting you nonstop, it would swing at you and then move around and then reposition and charge again. During these moments, I could have a lot of time to fire some rounds into it, and at first I had just assumed that this was similar to my first encounter with the Deathclaw. Maybe it was weak on purpose and it was a nice way to introduce them to me, but as the game went on, I dealt with them in a fairly similar way. All of the fights felt fairly easy, and over time I just sort of lost that huge fear factor that I used to have for them. I knew going up against one was somewhat challenging, but I also knew that I was always going to make it out alive. They had all of these new attacks and animations and this new look that made them appear much larger and tankier, but for the most part they just felt like any other large enemy in the wasteland. There are a few rare variations that are still somewhat of a challenge like glowing deathclaws or mystic deathclaws, but those are extremely rare. Yelgwai, sentry bots, and assaultrons all seemed to give me a much harder time than the standard deathclaws that I grew up fearing. It was as if they got a visual buff, but at the same time a huge gameplay nerf. And then heading into Fallout 76, we fight pretty much the same deathclaws that were in Fallout 4. But even in this, they feel way too easy to take down once you get some decent gear. At the point where I'm at in Fallout 76, deathclaws are no longer a threat anymore. I find that cave crickets or even mylert kings and rad scorpions are way harder to fight and provide much more of a challenge. For the longest time, I just assumed that they were a victim of a big nerf, and that they just couldn't deal the same damage that they used to. But after going back into the wasteland and fighting a few of them across all the different games, I have found that the modern Deathclaws still do deal high damage and can still take a lot of rounds, but the way that they move and attack has really hindered them. After each hit, you have a few seconds and you can reposition or run away behind an object or into a building blocking them from getting to you, whereas in Fallout 3 New Vegas, the Deathclaws had less objects to get stuck on and could usually cross terrain just as good as you. If you tried to go behind a car, they would just go right over the car and jump at you and keep hitting you. They could even follow you inside of buildings, which was absolutely terrifying. You think you're safe going into a doorway, and the next thing you know, this thing is right behind you. 
Another really big difference I noticed was that Deathclaws used to almost always be in packs besides for some random encounters. Sometimes just two of them and sometimes even in groups of four or five. This single fact alone made them much harder to deal with. Fighting one lone Deathclaw in New Vegas in Fallout 3 honestly isn't too much of a challenge once you get some good weapons. They're only dangerous if they're up close and if you have a good rifle you can usually take it out before it reaches you. But when you get charged by a few of them, it becomes much harder. Because by the time that you kill one of them, the other three that are along with it are within striking range and your health really begins to take a huge hit. Now at Fallout 4 and 76, they are mostly found alone. This makes them significantly less of a threat and I think it adds to why they aren't very scary anymore. Just facing one of them allows you to run around objects and avoid damage, or you can even engage it from a distance and take it out with no threat of another being right behind it. But here in Fallout 4, you can see that I spawned a few death claws in at once and you can see just how much scarier it is. I honestly think if they had kept death claws grouped up that it would have been even more challenging than the death claws in the older games. A group of the more modern death claws all running at you with all the new animations and everything is just simply horrifying. So I really think if they kept death claws grouped up that they would be still a major threat in the wasteland. Another thing I noticed, especially in the more recent Fallout games, is that the player has the ability to kill death claws just so much faster. Firstly, by being able to target its belly now, this is a weak spot for the death claw, and in previous games we didn't have this, but also the player in general is just so much stronger. In Fallout 76, with a good legendary weapon, you can take down a death claw with just a few shots. The weapons that litter the wasteland are significantly stronger than what they used to be. If you match a good legendary weapon roll with the right perks, a death claw just becomes a minor nuisance. So the weapons being stronger plus the addition of a weak spot really allows for some quick kills on these creatures. So I think a good remedy to the issue of death claws being less scary than they used to be would be to give them back that pack mentality and maybe add some more damage output or resistance to the belly weak spot. Having that pack mentality will really allow you to not use objects to your advantage when you're fighting them or at least minimize that because then you'll have multiple angles that you have to worry about and you can't just run around a car with one chasing you. And also adding that extra damage resistance to the belly weak spot will allow these creatures to take just a few more hits and give them some more time to get close to deal some damage to you. I think just adding these small changes would really make them a fierce enemy to come across again, and it would be really cool for those new players who are just entering the game to kind of have that same fear that we all once had of Death Claws. In conclusion, I still love Death Claws. I actually really like the new design and animations that they have also. I know that is a bit controversial and some people do like the older design, but now I think they look more like a genetically altered killing machine and less like a demon from the Scooby-Doo movies. But I do really miss them being in packs, and I really do hope that in Fallout 5 we get to see them again as a pack creature, and I also do hope that in the future they do get a slight buff to their stats. But I would like to know what you all think about this. Do you like the older version of the Death Claws more, or the newer version? For sure, let me know down in the comments below, but that is pretty much going to be it for this video, so I would like to say thank you for stopping by and watching, and as always, I would like to give a massive thank you to all of the channel members, Shaky Hands Workshop, Yozevated, Anna S, Playmaker, Fallout McFly, Networkgate, Gulti, Indica, Robert Kennard, Wandering Wastelander, Esdeath93, Lanthar, Anaristes, Captain Awesome, Citizen Girl, Heather Henderson, Patrick Ruta, 23 Icefire, Jay Smith, Argent Deer, Bowser Double Frank, Ice Cream Manny, Chris Decker, Theodore, Digital Aardvark, Lone Samurai OG, DFN Gaming, Christy Mellon Schwitz. You guys are amazing. I love you guys and have a great day.